I require a power rail uh, splitter or a virtual ground on one of my projects because um, I want to use one of these uh, HX power supplies from a computer uh, on one of my projects and I want to use one of these because if you look at the power uh, rating on this 12 volt um, rail uh, it supplies about 14 amps of, uh, of current uh, for the 12 volt rail but I want to split that to uh, plus and minus 6 volt rail so on some projects you might need say audio projects you would want a plus and minus rail uh, but you don't need that much power typically for audio projects um, but for I, I got a, another project which I require uh, quite a few amps uh, so that's why I want to use one of these cheap power supplies which is about £15 off of eBay uh, and just want to be able to split this 12 volt into plus and minus 6, six volts so it seems like a fairly simple thing to do uh, but actually there's a bit slightly complicated um, if you only get if you only really want it for op amps uh, for low power audio stuff I uh, think it's quite simple because you can use like potential dividers uh, to create a low power um, sp split voltage uh, but, um, for, for doing power stuff you need something slightly more complicated so I came up with this circuit I've got a couple of MOSFETs here an N channel and a P channel MOSFET uh, and I'm using those to generate the plus and minus 6 volts from the 12 volt supply uh, and all I'm using them uh, with is a, a, an op amp so I've got an LM324 which has four op amps in the package it's I think it's a 14 pin package um, I'm just using those op amps with a, a potential divider here and this potential divider if you set it halfway then uh, you you basically yeah, use these op amps to, to um, amplify the signal by 50% and generate your half halfway point here which is relative like you you take this as your zero volt and then you have six plus or minus six volts coming from that halfway volt which is your virtual ground uh, but because they're MOSFETs you should be able to power a fairly high amount of power from them I think uh, one of these is like rated at something like 12 amps uh, output or, or it might be actually a lot more than that um, but that'd be plenty for what I require um, so I've made my circuit up here and uh, I've got the two MOSFETs in the N channel up top and the P channel down the bottom and I've got the outputs from them on these two white wires and I'm going to run some tests on it just to make sure it does what I uh, want it to do and, and I've got the um, LM324 in here so I'm just using two, two op amps from, from that to actually just to um, use to split the, the voltage in half uh, one for the top um, MOSFET and one for the bottom MOSFET uh, and because I'm splitting the, the uh, power in half I want to make sure that I'm not conflicting uh, the power so I'm not, not not like shorting out any power so if I go back to the circuit diagram um, because each of these MOSFETs is going to be supplying 50% uh, to the ground and I don't want them actually conducting together at the same time because if they conduct at the same time then what happens is it will get short short out at this point where I've got them connected together and the power rail is short out. So really, it sh they should only be conducting at the point where you actually want to supply power either to the positive rail or to the negative rail uh, and not actually short, short out the rails together. So the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to check the current at these points so that the outputs of both, mo both MOSFETs. So uh, at this point here where they come together, I want to put a current meter in, in between there and make sure that when I power it up, it doesn't just short out the, uh, short out the power. So I've got um, some lithium ion batteries here, uh, which supply 12 volts. This is just like a, a test, test power supply. So if I power up the circuit, and I've just got an LED to show, that, show when the power is going into the circuit there. And it's a good sign that the LED is on, otherwise, um, so it's not dead, dead shorting out the power supply. Uh, if I turn my first meter onto, uh, this is on the microamp scale. Uh, now, I, I'd put it on 10 amp scale before. I've already measured this. Um, so, because for safety, I would have just put it on 10 amp, or I did put it on 10 amp scale first of all, just to make sure that it's not uh, shorting out. Otherwise, I'd blow the fuse in my meter. If I just put one of the connectors on one side and one connector on the other side of the, the meter and let's see 
Yeah, so there's there's no no stray current in there. A bit of difficulty. Yeah, so that's on the two hundred microamp scale, and there's there's nothing flowing between those two points. So that's test one, which is really good. So there's no it does it won't just short out the power supply. And so test two, if I turn the meter to voltage, um, and what I should get, so I should get um, from this midpoint. So if I put these in in the board on the same point, um, I should get my three uh, values. So if I put the negative connector on on there, and then between this is like. Plus and, and uh, this is like zero volts here, so that should be minus six volts. Uh, so that's giving me my minus value, and this is plus volts, so that's the plus value. So that actually gives me the power split in that I require. But um, and that's the full volt across the battery there, so that's twelve volts. Um, but that's half the story. So I know I know it splits the voltage now, and I know it doesn't short out. Um, between these two points on the MOSFETs, which is really good. Um, but the next thing to test is is whether or not it can actually provide a high amount of power on both the plus six volts and the minus six volt rail. So for this, I want to put both of my meters into the 10 amp slots. I need to move the connectors across. So that's that one into the 10 amp. Turn that to 10 amps. Uh, turn this one to 10 amps and just move the connector across the 10 amp slot okay so this it gets a bit more tricky now to hold the meters in place i've got to be careful not to short out the power supply uh do it, not to do a dead short on the power supply um so i want both these uh ground connectors to go on the ground side uh but i'm going to go through these uh 10 ohm resistors uh, so that I'm not dead short in the power supply out. So that's that's those on on that side, and then I can go to the plus and minus on here. Um, so on this meter here, if I look at the plus, uh, how much current I'm drawing plus, that's uh, I won't hold on for too long because these resistors get very hot. But that's just over. That's about 0.6 of an amp on that one. Uh, and if I just do it on the same meter, the, the negative. Um, and so that's minus 0.6 of an amp. So that's looking good because it's, it's 0.6 in both directions. And it's supplying a high amount of current. And now what I need to do, which is a bit more tricky, is to get um, one on both plus and minus at the same time to make sure that it can actually supply high currents for the plus and the minus thing. So I might on here for a bit longer than I, I want to be but so I've just sorted out I just sorted out the leads a bit better now and uh, okay see if I can get on both of them at the same time again I really probably should use some proper connector things to get on here so they're 0.56 on both rails so that's 0.6 of an amp for both plus and minus at the same time so it does what I want now there's one more test and I've got to check to see when I'm drawing that full current or well the amount of current I'm testing here with just these these resistors get which get quite hot when I'm testing uh, I just want to test the voltage drop when I'm drawing that current so I'm going to turn the, vo the meters to voltage uh, and when I put the load on full uh, on both sides probably one side at a time just to see how it, how it copes being unbalanced on both sides and then uh, balanced uh, drawing the same load from both sides make sure the voltage on on the power supply that's being supplied doesn't drop uh, too much so I've got to remember to put these connect uh, these meters back to the voltage side so I don't short out the uh, power supply uh, right, set them to 20 volt range okay um, so what I want them to measure is from this common side uh, where these on, on this side of these res resistors uh, I want to measure across the positive side 
uh, so six volts and I'll just do I'll just do one at first using using this left meter and I'll just check um, the voltage drop uh, on here so if I put this in to there so the loads on and look at the voltage so that's uh, 0.55 uh, so that's about a half volt drop for taking that half amp current from the batteries. It's not too bad, not brilliant, but not too bad. Uh, and then if I look at the, the negative side as well. Uh, so 0.55 so again about half half volt drop from this power power pack uh, when doing the full full voltage um, uh, uh, consumption on the bottom uh, power rail okay, so now what I want to do is the same again um, but I'll measure the uh, the power rail which I'm not um, which I'm not uh, taking power from and see how much that drops so I put the current current load in put on there properly. So I put the current load in the bottom one. Uh, so about point one volt drop on the power rail that I'm not using. And a, a Again, but on this on this side this time. So I'm putting the load on the opposite side, and that's about 0.1 volt drop again. So when I'm loading it up on one side, I'm getting about half volt drop on the side which I'm powering, and about 0.1 volt drop on the side which I'm not powering. Uh, and as I'm drawing a fair, fair amount of current there, uh, that's not too bad, I think. So the last test I want to do is I want to power up both sides uh, and then look at the voltage drop uh, that I've got on each side, on, on both sides as well. Um, so I'm going to use the meter on the left to do this. I'm going to power up both sides and just get closer so that... Hopefully I don't power up for too long because I don't think these resi these are resistors only look pretty small for half a half an amp of uh, current. One might even go up if I take too long. Okay, so that's point five six. That's point six five six. So that's about half half a volt. So that's consistent with them um, just powering up one side as well. So when I have them both powered up. Um, I get half a half a volt drop as well, just like I had when I had one side powered up on either side, it was a half volt drop. So that's very consistent results. So this circuit um, could be used uh, in an audio circuit if, if required. I mean, it should be able to provide uh, a quite high amount of current. Um, I see how it goes. So this is just on, on this lithium ion battery pack. Uh, so a half a volt drop when it's drawing half, half an amp or just over about 0.6 of an amp. Current, I don't uh, that that's probably okay for this. I I don't know. I, I'll try it on the um on my main power supply on my ATX power supply and see if I get uh, a similar power power drop um because I'll be getting power uh, resistance in these leads and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna get a bit of a, a voltage drop and the resistance within the actual MOSFETs themselves. Although because they're MOSFETs, there's not much resistance in there, so it shouldn't get too much power drop in there. Um, but it'll do for, for what I require for now and see, see how, how it goes in my project.